This is Kenny Jang with the Church Butler Lunch and Learn series. Today, uh, I've got a treat for you folks. Uh, we've got a good friend of mine, John Falk here. Welcome to the show today. Hey, thanks, Kenny. Thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. So um, I love what you're doing. I love the enthusiasm and the energy that you are bringing to the ministry world with uh, what you're doing. Let's get right to it. Um, many people might not know who you are here. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing right now with Amplified Impact and, and how you're relating to the churches and ministry space. Well, yeah, I've, I've been doing ministry for a long time, grew up in the church, grew up in a small, tiny church, and then was the communications and uh, graphics and communications director at a church that grew from about 500 to 2,500, um, was eventually the creative arts pastor after a series of um, promotions. And so now I'm just helping churches full time. This is what I get to do, uh, which is pretty exciting. So doing some training, doing some blog posting, some podcasting, um, you know, a little bit of everything, but it's, it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Nice. And so you're doing that through your organizations, Amplified and Back, right? Mm -hmm. How do people find out information about your company? Uh, well, I have a couple other websites also that I've been running for a long time. Openresources.org is a site that I've been running for the last nine years where you can search for free church resources. So there's tens of thousands of users on that site um, that I run. And I also have my, uh, my, the main company is Johnny Flash Productions, which does web and graphic design and churches are our primary uh, client. Nice. Johnny Flash. So tell us a little bit about that piece because I really like the, that support that you're giving to ministries mm -hmm. out there in that piece. The, on which part, Kenny? The supporting for, for that, the Johnny Flash area. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's originally how I found you. And so, um, yeah, I just share with the folks here what you do there. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I, it's funny. I did my first website out of high school. The, I was doing a free website for the basketball team and the coach. I graduated high school and the team, the coach came to me and said, Hey, can we pay you to maintain this website? And it was a website that I had created for the basketball team that he was now offering to pay me to keep doing. And so I, I realized, oh, wow, people will pay me to do websites. And so then obviously I have a passion for the church. And so started doing small business and church websites and stuff. And so we just do a lot of church branding, web design, you know, um, digital marketing for churches. And so I've been doing that for, wow, I guess coming up on 15 years. Right. Nice, nice. Um, so podcasting is something that I find powerful. I think the dynamics of content marketing just does something for people who are willing to take that plunge to become a publisher. Publishing is just very powerful in today's society mm -hmm. and especially for churches and ministries. And um, you've got a podcast going. And I think that's one of the things that I'd love to talk with you today, just to get your experience from how you've gone from zero to 60, um, difficulty levels, et cetera, if you're okay with that. So tell us a little bit about the podcast that you've launched recently. Yeah, well, I mean, I have to tell you, I've never thought that I would do a podcast. I actually had a friend come to me a year ago and was like, hey, we should start a podcast together. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to start a podcast. You know, I, it sounds like it's going to take a lot of time. And I just I just didn't want to add another, you know, plate spinning in the air. And so I kind of resisted for a while. And then, um, you know, I guess it was late last year. I uh, was one of my mentors was was talking to me. He's like, hey, you really need to do a podcast because, you know, you already have a lot of people that you're connected with, but it'll, it'll help you get connected with more people and get your message out there and stuff. So 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 here I am. I'm, I, you know, I've recorded six episodes. Uh, four of them have published. So I'm, I'm brand new at this, Kenny. I mean, I think you're you're probably more the expert than I am, but I'm certainly willing to share the things that I've learned, you know, starting one up. Yeah, so let's start with the basics. What's the name of the podcast and what are the platforms that you're broadcasting on right now? Uh, so the name of the podcast is Amplified Impact and it's for you know people in church ministry, uh, communication directors, church leaders, digital marketers that are trying to reach their community with the gospel using you know, did, you know marketing and, and other forms of communication. So uh, right now it's on iTunes as an audio uh, podcast. We post the videos on our website, so those are available. Uh, we're still working on getting a video podcast. I know that's something that that you recommend, and so yes. we're, we're working on that. Um, and then we have the show notes and stuff, and we're using Omni Studio to um, kind of organize the podcast. You know, do all the 
XML feed stuff. Yep. And so, um, are you so are you doing the actual editing of the audio and the video files yourself, or do you have someone else do that? I am documenting the process right now because I really do not want to do it, um, but I am doing it right now just because I, I'm kind of I kind of want it to be done a certain way, and so to be able to hand it off well, I can kind of at least document the way that I've been doing it, and then I'm sure they'll take some tweaks and, and make it better. But yeah, so one of the big questions I think people have, pastors and leaders that come to me I'm talking about podcast is really how much is it time consuming? Is it a time sick, et cetera? I know that you do definitely want to systematize it and hand it off to a team member. If you have that resource available, um, you've got four, four episodes up and running. You've got a half a dozen in the can. Uh, what would you say right now um, is the approximate amount of time that it takes for you to actually edit the file once it's recorded, right? So you'll do a recording session with someone, have the recording file on your computer, um, how long does it take before you can actually upload that file to the service? Oh, wow. I, I should probably time it because it'd be interesting to know the exact, I mean, I think just a few hours, you know, it really depends on how long the episode is, how good the other person is at speaking. Like yeah. you're, you're a pro. I noticed, I noticed you have a lot of like subtle things when you're doing an interview that, that you do that are really good that not everybody does. Like for example, you know, my tendency when I'm interviewing someone is to give verbal feedback like mm hmms and different things like that. But when you're listening to a podcast, you don't want to hear the person who's interviewing them, you know, with all these verbal feedback. Uh-huh, so, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to hear that. So you really need to like do the, the, the visual affirmation. You know, if you're doing it over video, the visual affirmation with the head nods and the so the person knows that like you're listening and they should keep talking. But you don't want to have so like for you, you're a pro at that. I didn't have to edit it when I interviewed you. I didn't have to edit anything out from your, you know, verbal little nuances. But for myself, like it's taken me a few episodes to realize, like, I just need to be like totally silent when when the other person's talking and then it saves time on the editing. Right. 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 Yeah. And so there's I mean, there's definitely ways of doing it. Some people just. Don't edit it at all. Leave all the ums and ahs and the, the pregnant pauses in there. Um, I think what you're doing in particular with the editing, it brings up the quality of the production, which is fantastic, especially on the videos that you've produced, the intros and the outros. And um, so I think it does make a difference. And long term, I think with most podcasters and most people who are doing any serial production, the, over time, the quality goes up, right? You start to pay attention to the little things mm-hmm. and get better and better incrementally over time. So what are you focusing on right now? What are literally, I mean, the reason why I wanted to bring you on to talk about this um, is not because um, it's not because you're, you've got the end all solution, but I really want to help document the process for other people, the midstream to say, Hey, you've got, you've got a couple episodes up and running, right? So you're a couple of steps ahead of most other people that are just thinking about it. And that to show that it is actually not that hard and that this is an accessible way to platform your issues, extend your reach, um, and, and engage with more community members. So um, what are you focusing on right now? What's the, the production piece that you're looking uh, at right now these days? Well, I think when, when I started the podcast, I was really nervous about how am I going to create content? How am I going to come up with content? And so my friend, my friend Troy Dean said, hey, just interview people that are influencers in whatever niche, in this case, church communication. And so what he said to do was to make a list of top 20 influencers in church communication, and then just start reaching out to them and see if they'll come onto your podcast. So I started making a list and then it ended up being like 50 people long because I couldn't just narrow it down to 20. So I had this spreadsheet of 50 people, their name, you know, their ministry or their church or whatever, their organization, and then their Twitter handle. And then I just kind of started going down and I, I, I was like, well, how am I going to get someone to come on my podcast when I don't have any episodes or anything? And so I, I looked through my list and I actually knew somebody on my top 50 list, uh, Jonathan Mom, you know, who I've talked to a number of times over the years and have gotten to know. And so I was like, well, I'll reach out to him. And I feel bad, honestly, Jonathan, if you're watching this, I, I'm sorry, because I didn't really disclose that it was a new podcast. I just said, hey, I'd love to have you on my podcast. And he was so gracious and he was just like, sure, let's do it. And so he came on the episode and it was great. It was phenomenal. I was terrible, but his answers were really good. And so I just started going down my list. And then I was really intentional about 
every time I'd interview someone, I'd ask them who I should also, who they thought I should interview and why. And so the list of 50 has now probably grown to 60 or 70 because I'm getting additional names from the people. So it's really a great networking tool. And so I think for churches to be able to, you know, start a podcast and it not be so internal focused, right? And I think this is something you and I talked about, but to really be able to think about who are the top 50 influencers in our community? You know, who are those people that we could get on? The mayor, the the fire chief, the police chief, the school principal, and start talking about, you know, how they're restoring the community, right? Because we're all about trying to restore the community, right? All of us as church leaders, we're, you know, it's a fallen world and we're trying to help restore it. And so I think, um, I think the more that we can use it as a net, you know, I think it's a great networking tool. Yeah. And that's one of the things like, so we are broadcasting this live on Facebook and I've chosen of all the groups and pages that I'm associated with, it's, it's being first broadcast live in the social media for churches group. And one of the reasons why is podcasting to me doesn't, I don't think most people, if you do a blind taste test, right. Uh, off on the street, they wouldn't put podcasting as one of the top five or 10 social media tools out there. But I find that podcasting, at least from my own experience and the ones that I've coached and helped others, is that it, it is the probably one of the most social uh, venues out there, right? Because you are actually interacting with people that you typically not have had that much interaction before. And you, you build a social connection that exists way after that episode in ways that, um, I think it cements that relationship much quicker than if you met them for the first time at a conference or some other event. Yeah, definitely. So um, let's let's talk about the top 20, top 50. Mm-hmm. Um, so how hard has it been? How many no's <laughs> have you gotten from people? I think I've only had two people not respond to me out of the people that I reached out. A couple people said, hey, I'm super slammed right now. Can we connect next month or whatever? You know, so I kind of have them in the queue. Most people have been surprisingly receptive. And I think, you know, things like Twitter and Facebook really bring down the walls because I don't have to send some anonymous email that feels like, you know, it's, you know, I mean, I get these all the time. I'm sure you do as well. These random, hey, we'd love to partner with you. We have SEO specialists and we only charge $10 per month and all this stuff. And you're just like, please stop sending me this stuff. You know, and so being able to connect with someone directly on Twitter or Facebook, I think really brings down, it makes the connections a lot easier. Yeah. Um, and something that you said about the content, you know, I think um, David Jennings wrote a book called Authority Content. And it's basically how you make one piece of content and then you use it a whole bunch of times in a whole bunch of different ways. I mean, kind of, that's like the, the boiled down summary. And I think churches have that as an opportunity, not just with something like podcasting, but with their sermons, right? You've got all this great content and you don't want it to just be the 30 or 40 minutes on Sunday morning. And then that be it, right? You can make social graphics. You can make little snippets. You can, you can use it in so many different ways. And I think podcasting kind of gives that opportunity as well, where it starts as a conversation and then it can kind of create all this additional content just from there. So have you um, taken a, I guess, step back now that you've got, you're you're up and running, right? It's Mm -hmm. legitimate. You you know how to do it. You can repeat it. Uh, Feels good. And you actually have guests that are being lined up. Um, What's the results have been in terms of impact or have, have anybody reached out to you in response to hearing it that you haven't known, right? So one of the things in entrepreneurship land is um, when you have a startup, a new product, I say to these entrepreneurs, you need to get to the point where you're selling your product to strangers, Mm -hmm. right? The fact that your uncle or your mom or your dad, they're the ones who love, it doesn't matter. That's that's not real sales, right? Once strangers actually interact with your product or service and then consume it, that becomes real. Have you gotten to that point where you've had interactions with strangers, people you really haven't had in your networks before? Yeah, I mean, and and it's hard to measure where it's coming from, right? Because I've got these different websites I'm running, the podcast. People don't always just say, oh, 
this is how I first connected to you. A lot of times they don't even remember the exact first interaction. It's been a slow drip of different content and exposure and stuff. So, but yeah, I mean, we had a sold, we did an online workshop um, a couple of weeks ago that was paid. It was sold out, you know, and so that was, that was got great feedback. And a lot of those people, you know, they might have an account on open resources, but my name on open resources is not really anywhere on the site, you know? Yeah. So they might get contacted, you know, they might've heard about it through there, but they don't know who I am personally, you know, but there was enough, um, I guess, interest and the topics resonated and, and the, the price point was right. Or, you know, just kind of where they were at that they were. So it is happening. It's hard to, it's hard to equate where it's, you know, what you can attribute it. Yeah. To. I mean, I'm mostly anecdotal, right? There's no statistics. You can't track that with the feedback, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, now let's talk about this as a tool for churches. Mm -hmm. Um, now that you've actually been in the driver's seat, right, which is a different perspective from outside. I think most of us as communicators, uh, if you don't have a podcast or if you've never run one, you can appreciate the power and the influence and the impact you can have. But being in the driver's seat just changes the perspective a little bit. What would be probably the, the two, three ideas that you would give churches for how to use a podcast? Hmm. That, that, that's a good question. Well, I mean, I think definitely the influ I think definitely just as a networking resource of what's going on in the community, what's, you know, I, I think there's opportunities to tell stories of what God's doing in your church. You know, I think a lot of times church leaders, and, and I, I've fallen into this as well, where we just kind of assume people know that come into church, they know what they're supposed to do, right? And, and we know that they're coming maybe without a church background or whatever, but we kind of just assume that they'll catch on pretty quick. So we think they'll know to serve, to give, to, you know, um, do all these different things when they, in reality, they don't, you know? And so I think, um, I think this gives an opportunity for churches to make um, giving more sexy, right. To make tithing more interesting because what happens is, is you start giving your resources and you don't hear about the, you know, the youth that had their lives changed because they went on this mission trip or they went on this different thing, or they did this outreach event. And so we have to connect the stories of transformation to the, we have to connect the stories of transformation to the giving and to what people are doing in the church. And so I think, I think podcasting is a great way to do that because you could do a, a, you know, an interview or talk to someone or capture a story. You could put it on your podcast. Then you could use a snippet of that in your service. You could put, you know, part of that on social media and you can kind of just use the same content like we were talking earlier in a whole bunch of different ways. And so I think that's another way that you can do it. I mean, all kinds of ways you could use it to get to know your staff, right? You know, if it's a larger church and you've got a bunch of different staff people, people in the church don't know who all those people are and they're changing, I Love that idea, you know? And so you could, you could just highlight and not, like not so polished or not so like churchy corporate kind of thing, like more casual. I mean, if you could go to their house and like film them in their own setting or, or capture it in their own setting and just talk about like who they are as a person, that'll resonate a lot more with people than just like, oh, they have this degree and they've been doing church this for that long. I mean, that that's okay, but that's not going to really connect as well as just being more personal. Yes, I definitely agree. I think that's one of the reasons why social media is so powerful is, is that it allows you to humanize so many of the things that in other mediums or in other practices just get lost. And it, you know, there's just too much clutter out there today. So telling stories and humanizing is, I, I totally agree with you. So um, in terms of podcasting, um, are, are you doing seasons? Are you doing just infinite uh, a run? You know, is, are you in it for the long haul? That's that's one of the questions that many people have. Um, Christianity, by the way, I was talking with the guys at Libsyn, which is the service that I use. Uh, um, we were chatting at, um, about statistics on podcasting, and Christianity is the largest category of podcasts in iTunes, which I, you know, it's surprising, but not that surprising. Uh, but they said something like um, fifty to sixty percent of podcasts don't make it past. A certain number of episodes hmm. and so what's your take on that what's your your mindset right now is this something that's just for a short season or are you in it for the long haul 
I mean, I love doing the interviews. I love connecting with people. So that part of it's great. I can tell already after doing just a few episodes, I've got to get someone else to eventually do the video editing just so I'm not the bottleneck because I could I could schedule a few interviews per week and I wouldn't get worn out and I would enjoy that. But to edit a few episodes per week or even once a week, you know, I just have a lot of stuff going on and I know church leaders have a lot of stuff going on. And so I think you've got to make it a team effort you know, in order to make it sustainable. And so that's, that's kind of my plan of where I'm headed. That's why I'm documenting. I'm using process street. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's a great tool to document processes. So I, I, you know, I'm in there kind of tweaking and getting the process down so I can hand it off to someone else on my team to, to take care of. So uh, that that's, yeah, that's where I'm headed. You know, a couple other things too, this is sort of related and and not related, but um, I, when I launched the podcast, I did a Facebook event to, kind of get the momentum started on the podcast that really helped because people love like saying they're going to a Facebook event. And in this case, they didn't have to go anywhere. And so that really helped because then I had a whole group of people that I could kind of communicate out to, Hey, the first episode's about the launch. Hey, go rate the podcast, you know, and they're kind of signing up to be on your street team, if you will, for the launch. So I think that's something that I did that I already had someone contact me like, hey, I'm going to copy your idea for launching a podcast and and use a Facebook event. And I was like, well, I got it from someone else, you know, so go for it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's talk about that. Literally, how did you start? Where did you did you look it up on the Web? Did you take um, Ray's podcasting course? How, how did you literally learn the mechanics, which isn't that hard? Right. But wh- where did you what was the resource that you actually learned how to podcast? Well, I definitely listen to a lot of podcasts. So you kind of pick up some of the different things just listening to them. Uh, but I, I'd say I learned the most from Troy Dean. He runs this thing called Rockstar Empires, and it's basically how to become a rock star in your niche. And so he talks about podcasting, and that was where the top 20 came from and all that. So definitely from him, I, you know, I'd say I learned the most. But there's a lot of little nuances you know, in terms of like, the, the structure of what your structure of your podcast episodes are going to be, you know, in this case I'm doing interviews. So I've got some kind of intro before the interview, the interview, and then sometimes an outro, you know, and then I try to use the same sign on. So, Hey, church communicators, Johnny flash here, you know, and I go, I go through that. And then the sign off, since it's amplified impact, I always say it's time to amp it up, you know? And so that's like the sign off and the, the audio kind of being the same, And I realized after the first episode, I needed to put like a little snippet of interesting material at the front end. So before I even do my intro, anything, I take 30 seconds that's really interesting, that's part of a broader conversation and drop it at the beginning. So they kind of hear something that's like, whoa, wow, I want to hear Kenny talk about reaching millennials, you know, and then I say, hey, Johnny, you know, roll the intro you know, my sign on, Hey, this is what we're going to talk about today. You know, any other kind of stuff, get into the interview and then, you know, afterwards and stuff. So, so, I mean, you can structure it and obviously there's podcasts that do it all different ways. You just have to kind of find a formula that you want to use and then what your different components are going to be and sort of plug it in from there. Nice. Yeah. I think there's definitely some science to it, just like there is in um, the movies and just in, in sermons and, and speeches and talks, you know that in the first, you know, three minutes, you got to get the audience to laugh with you once to, you know, puncture any um, anxiousness mm-hmm. in there and to get them on the same page. And there's a certain point where you're going to wrap it up, et cetera. What's the actual length that you're targeting for your conversations? Well, I realized when I started doing it that if I, you know, I, I, I kind of said I wanted to be short, but I wasn't. I wasn't on point enough to keep it to that length. And so it took me it took me about three or four episodes in to realize like, I feel like for me, the 20 to 25 minute range is kind of ideal because it's, it's enough where you can cover some stuff, but it doesn't just keep going on. And a lot of times I find even for myself after about 20 to 25 minutes, it's not that I don't want to keep listening. It's just that I've gotten to wherever I'm driving or the next thing in my day is about to happen or whatever. And so I just can't like sustain a really long podcast in one sitting. I still, a lot of times we'll get through it. So for me, I'm trying to get to the 20 to 25 minute. I've only hit it once out of the first four episodes, though. So time really flies when you're having fun, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. So let's go just um, a little bit mechanical here. Uh, mm-hmm. What equipment literally are you using and what application again? So, Mike, everyone talks about they need some fancy mic. We both have professional mics here. What, what mic do you have right in front of you? 
Uh, this one is one that I already had um, actually before. It was when my friend said, hey, we should start a podcast. He said, go order this mic. It's only $50. And so this is an Audio-Technica ATR, I don't know, 2500 something like that. And it's um, 50 bucks is all you need. You've got good quality, good voice, tone, everything. Yeah, right. I, I added, I realized I spit a lot, you know, when I'm talking. And so I added like a little $10 windscreen. And this particular mic came with like a stand that would go on your table. And I realized that I move around too much and there was too much vibration happening. And so I added this, uh, I don't know if you can see it in the in the view here, but I added like a boom arm so that yep. I can kind of get it up close to me and not have to worry about like vibrational stuff. So, um, so yeah, so I mean, yeah, not a lot of money. I mean, you know, 150 bucks, you can probably get your arm, your mic, your windscreen, everything that you need. I'm just using my little Apple Bud ear you know earbuds so that you don't get any sound back and then my camera i got i have one on my macbook pro but it tends to sit too low yep. you know and i want it to kind of be more up at eye level and so i'm using a big cinema display an old school one that doesn't have a camera on it so i had to go get um this is like a logitech i think it's like a hundred dollar you know um camera that i'm using has the little thing i can flip down on it so that when i'm not recording you know, CIA is not spying on me and stuff. Right. But, uh, so I mean, not a lot of money. And then I have, I went with the led light. I have some, um, led lights up, up kind of here. You can't really see, but, um, I went with led because I'm kind of in a small space and I didn't want the heat to be an issue. And so I think they were a few hundred dollars and I have like some filter on them to so they're not so blinding. Yeah. I don't have my hot lights on today, but you know, the latest thing I, um, bought is this uh selfie ring light have you ever seen these? oh I, i've seen it but i haven't got to use one how does it work well so uh i mean it, it, i think you need a couple of them to work okay. but they clip onto you know your phone or your laptop mm -hmm. etc um and it has three different levels of brightness it's like a ring light right so yeah, yeah. um those are the types of things that i think as you get along on the journey those mm -hmm. are the things that make a difference in the production value but um i think the point is that the investment is really really low to get into the game right you don't really need to um at the end of the day you really could be recording off of an iphone and the quality is going to be okay yeah the um, audio is the most important obviously i mean the video is good but like people want to hear something clearly you know so what application are you on a mac or a pc when you're editing the actual audio video I'm on a Mac, so I'm using uh, Skype to do the video interviews. I'm using the eCam uh, Skype call recorder to capture. It'll allow me to capture the split screen and then the local and the remote all kind of separate. So I can kind of, if I you know decide to, I can edit back and forth between single shot or split screen um, during the interview. And then I'm using, I, I use the Adobe Creative Suite for all different kinds of things, Photoshop, InDesign, yep. all that. So I'm using Premiere for... Uh, doing the video editing. Yeah, so I use the, for when I do Skype uh, head to head, uh, I use the Ecamm call, Skype call recorder too. It's uh, 20 bucks, I think, or 15 mm -hmm. or yes. 20 bucks. Um, it's easy. It just pops up automatically. There's a record button, et cetera. Um, and so I love that. I, I just want to share a little bit more detail about that. You have the option of it automatically stitching the side by side, kind of like this in, in, in the CNN style, right? It yep. automatically takes the videos and creates one video file that outputs for you. And then you have the option to record each of the videos separately so that if you wanted to, you can have, you know, Johnny, you as uh, your video separately, you can have my video separately, or you can do your own post edit for together. Um, have you tried actually Skype call recording for more than two people? I actually have heard that you can do more than two people with it. I haven't tried it, but we'll have to we'll have to try that. That sounds yeah. We'd have to test it out. I, I just heard recently, and I think that might be interesting. Uh, some other friends are using Zoom, um, which is a webinar mm -hmm. and video conferencing software, but that records as well. And the latest one I think that people really need to try out is Amazon Chime. I don't know if you've heard about. Chime, I haven't got to try it yet. Uh, but Amazon supposedly is coming out with a video conferencing killer. Um, it's free. It's downloadable. It's a uh, web based as well as um, app, mobile app based, and supposedly it works really well and records too. But again, my point is I'm trying to make this ac accessible as possible because this is one of the things that I think almost every brand, every church, every leader really should be thinking about, whether it's a short run of, again, I, I love your idea of interviewing the staff members. 
I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, and then even community members, that's one of the things I'm just pummeling church leaders. Get out and get to know people. And if you're shy, this is a great excuse to do it. And you can even do it at a bar. You don't need to meet them in person sure. and still be social. And I think you could even vol- interview volunteers, you know. Uh, hey, yeah. how long have you been serving? What what why'd you start serving? What's the best part about serving? You know, and you could work in a few personal questions there you know, who you are, what, what's your day job? Oh, I'm a computer guy, but during the Sunday, I help the kids, you know, the fourth graders or whatever. And, you know, it kind of brings it down like, oh, wow, he's doing this and he doesn't have any professional experience like teaching kids or anything like that, you know? And then, and then you ask him like what he loves most about it. And a lot of times they'll say things like, you know, volunteering in the children's ministry is the highlight of my week. Right. And so they'll, they'll talk about how they just love seeing the kids start to get these truths of scripture and different things. And so, I mean, you could, you could work in volunteers too. It doesn't even have to be staff people. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. I think the, once you start podcasting, once you start doing interviews, um, the, the ideas just roll off your tongue, right? It just becomes such a versatile tool to share these conversations with other people across social media. Okay, so mm-hmm. as we wrap up, what if someone to, wanted to get in touch with you today or find out about your podcast, what's the best way to do that? Give us some of your digits, your websites, your Twitter handle, um, list them all. <laughs> sure, okay. Well, amplifiedimpact.org is a great starting spot. There's free resources, videos, articles, all that kind of stuff. Um, as I mentioned earlier, openresources.org is a great resource for um, downloading free sermon series, creative content. And so you can just go on there and it, it, we're curating a lot of the big churches content. So, you know, elevation and life church and a lot of those churches that are putting it out they're they're embedded in there. And then you can click through and get directly to where that stuff is. So you can kind of search a lot of sites just from the open resources, um, on Twitter. It's just John Falk, J O H N F A L K E. Um, Facebook's the same, Really, I mean, if you Google me, it's you'll, you'll you'll get a whole list of different places to find me. But those are probably those are probably the best ones. And your alias of Johnny Flash, I love it. Yeah, JohnnyFlash.com. There you go. J o h n n y Flash.com. You can see all the kind of the branding and the graphic design, web design, all the stuff that we're doing, kind of on that end. So. And finally, your your podcast itself is the Amplified Impact Church Communications Podcast on iTunes. I think. Yep. Everyone here should literally click over, do the search right now. You can abandon this interview video. Go look it up and subscribe because I think Johnny is doing some really good work there. And it's also a journey listening to him and seeing how a podcast evolves over time as it's gotten out of the gates. And he's off to a wonderful start. So highly recommend you guys following John um, and his work with Amplified Impact. Thanks so much for being with us today, John. Uh, before we leave, any just any parting words in terms of where you see podcasting going or what you think you're going to be seeing over the next 12 months with podcasts? Well, I think digital media just in general, especially digital video content is just exploding, you know, and so podcasts can certainly be part of that in terms of just people want to consume stuff online and on their devices. And so I think the TV, as we know it from from old, you know, a decade ago, it, it, it it's just the media companies, it's everybody can be you know i mean you and i are creating media and we're not we're not some big network or anything you know and so i think it's just bringing down the walls and i think the walls are going to continue to come down and so i think podcasting is, is going to be a part of that well thanks for being with us for today's lunch and learn session everybody here uh, would love for you to comment and like this and share this on your own pages get more people in here so that people can have better understanding of resources like this so we can further it for the kingdom thanks johnny for being with us today thanks kenny it's been a pleasure